Welcome to The Coalition. This is a talk show dedicated to discussing health, wellness, and inspiration. I'm your host, Dr. Shani Belgrave. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Coalition. I'm your host, Dr. Shani Belgrave. I am a bariatric and minimally invasive surgeon in Atlanta, Georgia. You can learn more about me and get connected at www.drshanibelgrave.com. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and I'm delighted to welcome to the show today, Mr. Kenneth Riddick. Mr. Riddick is the founder of Brothers Brunch Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to men's self-care and mental health. Mr. Kenneth Riddick, thank you so much for joining the coalition. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Wonderful. So May is Mental Health Awareness Month, as you know. Yes, so I'm is. truly grateful and appreciative that you've agreed to join the coalition to spread awareness about this topic, which is so important and affects so many. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be on the coalition. I always love to talk about mental health and especially tell my story because many of us don't. So, you know, hopefully this helps someone. Fantastic. So on that note, we're going to jump right into it. Mr. Reddit, can you please share with us your personal testimony and journey as it relates to alcoholism and mental health? My sobriety date is 2-2-22. This uh, is 27 months of sobriety for me. Um, I'm pretty much, I was a 30-year alcoholic, very functioning, um, have a great position in my company, uh, but still just between my, my bipolar um, illness, um, diagnosis, bipolar depression, my alcoholism, uh, ended up in a lot of situations from college all the way up to two and a half, uh, 27 months ago when I went out on my last binge. So, uh, that's why I say, I love to share my story because a lot of people don't, um, think that other people have gone through those things, but also more importantly, we don't want to share it, but I found that the more I share, the more men want to talk, the more women, people in general, just because I'm open about it and they finally can feel comfortable talking about it as well. That's amazing. So how bring us from where you were to what happened that you ended up where you are today with being sober? OK, well, probably the first bout was in college. Uh, didn't realize that I was bipolar. Um, the alcohol was, like I said, 30 years. So I just turned 50. So that was two years ago. It wasn't until 48 I stopped and it was at 18 that I started. So, uh, you know, had my first uh, suicidal attempt uh, back in college, uh, had some situations with driving uh, throughout the years, uh, actually ended up having a breathalyzer on my car at one point in time. Uh, but like I said, I was still functioning, still able to work. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, I got triggered um, and which is not uncommon for folks like myself. Uh, because uh, one of the things people don't realize is that alcohol works on the neurotransmitters of the brain and your emotions are never truly regulated. And so at that point in time, which also was, I guess you could say, the last uh, suicide attempt um, a couple of years ago. Um, and then my daughter came and picked me up. Uh, I went to Ridgeview and I can happily say that once I walked out, God had removed the taste out of my tongue. And that's one thing my dad always told me was, son. Pray that the taste be removed from your mouth. And since then, I've had no desire but to help people that have gone through or that are going through uh, similar journeys that I have had and continue to be the positive role model that I am for my family, my kids, and for my parents to be able to finally sleep at night. Well, that's amazing. Congratulations on your sobriety. Thank you. So what has been your biggest triumph, would you say? I say the biggest thing is that um, outside of my parents being able to sleep at night, <laughs> you know, which um, I want them to be around longer. So I know this will keep them around. Um, just being able to continue my sobriety, uh, to stay diligent uh, with my mental health and self-care uh, actions that I know that I have to have consistently. And I think that's the thing is that it's, it's just like anything else. Um, you know, when you, when, when you get to it, you got to stick with it and you have to be determined. Uh, but one thing I tell people is that my purpose is my peace. And uh, when you say my biggest triumph, I found my purpose now. 
and that's with my brother's brunch foundation and helping other uh black men like myself uh through my foundation but also uh i'm a peer leader uh in douglas county for the national alliance for mental illness so not only do I work with the black men within my organization, but I also help the community uh, as a whole when it comes to crisis, trauma, and all of those key areas that a lot of times people just don't understand people like me. Right. So for somebody watching this that may be dealing with either addiction or mental health issues, what would you say is the first step? What steps did you take? Um, acceptance, um, recognizing um, that I had a problem. Uh, one of the things I'll say, and I want to kind of break this up real quick a little bit, because we have mental health and we have mental illness. And I think a lot of people don't focus on their mental health because all they're thinking about is someone that has mental illness. We all should take care of and protect our mental health. So when I tell men that I set WUSA moments each week for myself, everyone should have that, not just a person with mental illness. That means that you talk to a therapist once a month just to have someone that you're not emotionally connected to, to just bounce things off. Because sometimes, unlike someone else that may say, well, you know, but did you think about the therapist might just say, you know what, I think that might work. You know, so that emotional connection that a lot of people have the therapist is always there. How many times do we say, I wish I had somebody to talk to? Mm -hmm. Well, we got benefits. We got somebody to talk to all the time if we want to, you know, but we don't think of it that way. Uh, you know, go get your massage, uh, make that sacrifice. A lot of things I found is that check your benefits because for me, massage is covered to a certain percent. If you go to someone that is a pr true professional, uh, physical therapy is covered acupuncture. I take practice in all these things such as yoga, meditation. So I believe that any person, number one, accept it, recognize it, take the steps. And my principles are PCP, positive, consistent, and present. We can always be positive, but we have to remain uh, consistent to be present for ourselves, but also our families and ultimately the work that we're doing to help the community. Wow, I think what you said is such an eye opener, you know, and I'm glad you made that distinction because mental health is an, is universal. That's important for everyone. And mm -hmm. so we shouldn't look at it as though you have to have an illness in order to be looking after your mental health. You don't want to only wait until there's an issue to then try to address it. So Exactly. And that's the perception of the stigma that has to be changed. Um, I'll just share this. My seven year old is already proactively in therapy just because I want him to be able to navigate uh, through life. Uh, I need him to have a mediator. I need him to have someone where nobody really wants to talk to their parents a lot of times. But if I've already started this relationship, even if he has problems, he has somebody he can talk to. Uh, he is not a stranger. It's not like I'm going to because it's a problem. And like I said, it's benefits that we have. Benefits are to benefit us. We have to take advantage of that so that our family can be whole, our family can have peace, and overall our family can be well. Right. I was going to ask you a question about your bipolar diagnosis in case there's someone watching who maybe doesn't know that they have that. Mm -hmm. um, would you be able to share what symptoms or signs you had and how it came to be diagnosed? Number one was alcoholism. Uh, number two, um, they, uh, many may know of the term mania, but they also have hypomania. So for me, um, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, you gotta just be out doing crazy stuff, but if you got hyper spending, um, me, I spent a lot of money at, at, at the gentlemen's clubs. So that was pretty much a lot of my mania there money. I didn't have at times, uh, people that, you know, hop on a plane and might say, I'm going to Vegas. You know, a lot of addiction is around the bipolar folks, but also when you hit a low and you get stuck, then you've gotten in that deep depression. Then if you realize that you have those highs and those lows and they're pretty consistent, then you probably want to go ahead and start taking it seriously. I mean, you know, um, so it's just some of the common things. But like I said, that's why we have to also 
protect our mental health and continue that we're doing the things because if we're better conditioned, if our mind is functioning, if we're getting that rest, that's another thing, not sleeping. I mean, I would go hours and I would, I would used to average maybe, maybe four to six hours, you know, now at least I'm 68, six to eight. But I think for me, it was more so the alcoholism, um, like I say, hypomania and those sorts of things that you know, kind of stood out at a point where I realized um, when I went out on my last binge. And that's after building a brand new home, getting promoted to executive sales rep, but I wasn't getting treated. Now those behaviors are not even thought of, you know, but try not to hit the rock bottom you know, before you make the change, uh, recognize and be the best you that you can be. Absolutely. So when did you start Brothers Brunch Foundation and kind of what prompted you to go ahead and do that? Well, the Brothers Brunch itself started a couple of years ago. Um, I actually had a T-shirt company and I was going to uh, give money to support mental health. Uh, and I just received in my spirit that, you know, hey, I need to help the men. And so I went down to Jacksonville, Florida, which is my hometown, and I did my first Brothers Brunch Father's Day weekend, which every year now I go down um, because I do quarterly events in other cities that aren't local. Um, so right now I'm here in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Metro, Douglasville and Jacksonville, Florida. And so um, I started doing it. It started to be around eating. Then when I brought in other activities and last year in August, um, when I was officially announced as a 501c3, I realized that, you know what, this is not a time to eat, but be fed mental health and self-care awareness. So that's where the tagline comes from. So we do a lot of activities, um, you know, with the brothers. And so it's good to be two years strong. And I would have never thought that the reception and even it feels like I'm a politician almost, you know, talking to some of the people, but it's just people aren't used to, especially a black man standing up talking about this. And so this is my this is my assignment and I'm being obedient and I'm going to continue to help as many men as I can, um, you know, through the Brothers Brunch Foundation. So do you think that what you're doing is helping to break the stigma? Yes, it is. Uh, because even, you know, I think about even when I was at a store earlier and uh, I gave a young man my car and told him what I did and he just smiled, you know, and he says, you know what? I just had a two year old. Uh, uh, I got I just I just had a baby. And um, he was like, I need something like this. So mm -hmm. the good thing about it is we have to, when I say breaking the stigma, when we talk about that, we have to think, we have to have people not worry about titles. Because the reason why a lot of people don't want to get help is because they don't want to understand the truth. You know, that, hey, I may have a problem. Or we get to the old school of, you know, hey, we just going to pray about it. No, God gave us pharmaceuticals for a reason. You know, and no matter how you feel about certain ones, and you can go the holistic route if it works. But we have to do what we have to do. And the men are just so receptive and want to be a part of it. And like I said, this goes beyond Brothers Brunch Foundation. It's just me giving my testimony out in the streets. And mm -hmm. I'd say 80% of my conversations, now that I'm aligned with my purpose, are about my mental health and my addiction. And I never thought I would get so much gratification out of talking about my mental illness and my addiction. It's like, who wants to talk about that? But... <laughs> It's and the thing about it is, once you start to talk about it, you feel better. Nobody can judge you. You put it out there. It's like, so what? I mean, you know, especially if it's your past. I mean, if no consequences happen, unless you've truly done something wrong to hurt somebody, nobody can judge you. And so wow. that's that's how. And the men, the men just appreciate that openness, that honesty, that genuineness. And you know, I made a post yesterday, and I said. If there were a political position, you know, to run for a mental health office, I said, I want to be the face because people will understand and I understand that they can trust me and that I'm going to be real. And mm -hmm. that's all I can give you. And once you free yourself of that stigma, it frees your life. Absolutely. So the work that you're doing is really important. Can you kind of share with our viewers some of the past events that you've done with the foundation and what they can expect, what new events are coming up? 
Okay. Yeah. So, um, so like I said, we, we've done a few things in Jacksonville. Uh, actually, we've uh, we sat on the river, uh, 12 men just sitting there having conversations. Uh, like I said, we had the first brunch. Um, we've had a uh, red light uh, meditation group and discussion uh, down in Jacksonville. And as a part of the Brothers Brunch Foundation, we also participate in the NAMI walks. And now it's just ironic that I am a NAMI peer leader as well. Here in Atlanta, where I reside, you know, it's always something going on because every second Tuesday um, we have a hybrid conversation where we've had men up in Chicago, Houston, down in Orlando that hop on virtually. Then we'll have the men right there. So that happens every Tuesday. Um, for two years in a row, we've done a men's holiday relaxation. So the men have been able to come to the spa. They get salt cave, uh, oxygen bar, foot detox. Um, Reiki. Uh, this year in February, uh, we had our first Black Men Bowl. Um, there were 25 men present. Free bowling, free breakfast. Um, everything I do is free for the men because I don't want anyone who can't afford it to not be able to support, to not be able to come. And I don't want them to feel uncomfortable. So we seek grants and funding uh, just so that the men can get the services when we have events. Um, what do we have coming up? Foundation has adopted a road in uh, Douglasville, Georgia, uh, Chapel Hill, the main road. So we'll have our first cleanup uh, coming up on June 8th, and we'll be doing that quarterly to show in the community what we're doing. And, um, you know, and that's that's positive for the men, too, because those men that might have been depressed and not doing anything, it shows progress if they're getting out and how they're interacting, you know, every quarter. Uh, also partnered to do a uh, Black Men's Mental Health Conference in Jacksonville uh, Father's Day weekend. Uh, as well as our first inaugural mental health linen ball, July 20th at the uh, Radio Condry Event Center in Douglasville. But uh, so there's a lot we have going on uh, this month. Every Tuesday, we're actually going to have a virtual conversation. So uh, Brothers Brunch Foundation is always busy, but the ultimate goal is to help our men. And it's not just in groups. For men that truly want to get kickstarted on a new mental health and self-care journey, we want to provide them with the first six sessions of what they need. That could be therapy, chiropractor, esthetician, dietitian, nutritionist, whatever it is to help the men feel better. Why the number six? Because it takes six times, a lot of times, to truly hear something before you get it. It takes six months to change a behavior and really start to see the, see the difference. So that six number means a lot when it comes to this. And as we're expanding and as we're growing, you know, we want to help at least 25 men in the cities that we operate get kickstarted on six sessions. So we may have 30 men in a group. It might only be one. But that means that there might be 10 other men that say, no, I don't need it. I'm going to use my benefits and make a change. So it's not that you have to see those men to see the change. The change will come as we all grow together. Absolutely. I'm so excited that you have joined the coalition because the coalition is, the goal is to be grassroots. How can we partner together mm -hmm. um, to amplify information that can transform lives? Yes. So I think that what you're doing is such a good fit for what I'm attempting to do with the okay. coalition. So yes. I want to thank you so very much. For people watching this that are excited about what they're seeing, what they're hearing, what is the best way for those people to learn more about you, the mission, and the Brothers Brunch Foundation? Oh, my goodness. All the handles. Uh, www. I think that's three W's. Dot, Brothers Brunch Foundation dot com. Um, Instagram is Brothers Brunch Foundation Inc. Um, Facebook is Brothers Brunch Foundation Inc. You can go to YouTube, Brothers Brunch Foundation Inc. And if you want to find the events, all you have to do is register on a Eventbrite or follow and you will get all the notifications for Brothers Brunch Foundation Inc. So um, message me, inbox me. I mean, I'm here for you because I understand, and many don't. I had a conversation with someone today, it was a pastor, and he was saying that he has some people that are in his congregation that he's you know, attempting to help. And I said, you know, if you need me to talk with them, please, please let them talk to me because a lot of times with folks like me, unless you truly understand what they've been through 
and the journey of a person who's mentally ill and that's an addict, there's really not much you can do but give them a word of encouragement or let them know that you're there. So anybody that needs me to be here for them, I try to help find them a place that they can be, please reach out. Don't hesitate because we need each other and you are not alone. You are not alone. That is beautiful, Mr. Reddick. Um, I familiarized myself with your story, and I like how in other um, forums I've heard you say that you came from a loving family, that you had achieved mm -hmm. professional success. And I think that's so important to share so that people know that there's not a stereotypical person that yeah. can have either problems with addiction or mental health issues that it can affect anybody. Yes, yes, it, it, it can. And that's, and that's the other reason. I told someone today, I said, I don't know if somebody may be going through, may have been through, or maybe there's somebody may be close to getting there. And mm -hmm. I can relate on all angles. And when I tell my story, people understand that I do understand and they feel comfortable getting the help or me trying to find for them to get help. So yes, please, whatever. And one thing I always say, too, is because they say it's OK to not be OK. I say it's OK to not be your OK, because everyone has a different OK. We can't set our standards of mental health on what someone else is able to do or what someone else is able to get through. We have our journey. We have our time. But most importantly, we have to do the work. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Reddick. I'm hopeful that you'll join the coalition another time. I will. Some more. And I know I'm going to see you out in the community again. I've already seen you at the community health fair. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> I, and, and any place you need me to be, let me know, because I'm part of the coalition now. So we got work to do. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much, Mr. Reddick. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another impactful episode of The Coalition that we did specially just for May, which is Mental Health Awareness Month. Special thank you to Mr. Kenneth Riddick of the Brothers Brunch Foundation. Please feel free to contact Mr. Riddick through the Brothers Brunch Foundation. As for me, you can reach out to me and connect with me at www.drshawneebelgrave.com. Thanks so much for watching. This was specifically for the fellas, so make sure you share this episode with your father, your uncle, your cousins, your neighbors. We really want to spread the word and raise mental health awareness. I'll see you next time.